Hi guys, this is the other guy again. Okay, so just a quick recap. Uh, basically, I put a, I, I added springs onto my leaf springs here, and I had a total gain of about three to four inches um, lift from the original factory height. Okay, so from the original factory height, I have since gained about three to four inches of uh, height once I added this spring right here and this spring right here okay so because of that what I found out was that my yoke that is that goes into the drive shaft here uh, it has come out about one inch or uh, inch and a half so that's the drive shaft right there and it's come out about half an inch so uh, that's what I'm worried about so I was afraid that if I go down the highway, that due to the oscillation of the road uh, suspension here, that the yoke might slip out of the drive shaft, thereby causing a uh, an accident. And so, okay, so what this is here is that I have already removed the yoke from the uh, pinion flange here. Okay, so I have a surprise I want to show you. Basically, what I needed to do, okay, because of the added height here, and uh, because the pinion yoke has slipped out a little bit due to the height, okay, um, I was afraid that it might come out. So my plan is to put a to install a drive line spacer, and I've measured it. I need about an inch um, of a drive line spacer for this truck. So that, uh, for the sake of safety, it, the yoke will not fall out. So I want to show you something that I discovered, and it's very, very revealing. I hope that this video will help you if you are doing a similar project uh, like me. Okay, so what we have here, okay, is my Toyota Tundra uh, yoke, okay, and basically... I am look, trying to look for a spacer for it, and so um, the, I've checked online, there's no spacer for this particular uh, truck. This is a 2000 Toyota Tundra, but what I discovered, okay, is that I also have a Toyota 4Runner that's been lifted, and I have a spare uh, drive shaft. See, this is a Toyota 4Runner drive shaft here. And this is the Toyota 4Runner yoke, and this is the Tundra yoke, okay? And I have to show you something. It's very, very revealing, okay? Like I said, this I just took this out, and this is the uh, 4Runner yoke, and guess what? Okay, this is what I discovered. This is the Tundra yoke, and this is the Toyota 4Runner drive shaft. Watch. See this? Okay, look at that, goes in like a glove, it's as if it's made for it, and this shocks me, uh, because I didn't think it'll fit, but it's, after examining the dimensions here versus the forerunners, it's exactly the same dimension, okay, and uh, I'll show you here, let me take this out. Okay, so now I've laid them side by side. Okay, again, Forerunner, again, um, Tundra. I have a caliper here. Okay, and see this? It's it's switched to um, metric. Okay, I've zeroed it. Okay, to as close to zero as possible. So watch this. It's about forty-five point nine. Okay, around that ballpark. Okay, and watch this. Exact, it's, let's see. And this is the foreign, or the Toyota, um, okay. That's the Toyota Tundra, 45.9. <coughs> what does it say? It's identical. I am shocked. Considering that this, uh, the Tundra is a V8, and the Forerunner is a V6. And I'll show you my Forerunner. That's the Forerunner. It's a 92 Forerunner. Okay. 
So I'm actually shocked that uh, a 92 Forerunner yoke is the same yoke as a 2000 Toyota Tundra. I feel like uh, Toyota just swapped parts. So watch this. Okay. So the distance here. Okay. Look at that. That's 69.6. So let's call it 69.6. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Okay. So let's call 70. Seven, let's start 70. Okay, hold on. So 69.47. Okay. So let's check this out. So 70, 70.27. So about 70. So it's about 70 between each. Okay. So they are identical. Okay. And so what I'm going to do. Yes, I am just because I can't find a spacer, a dry flying spacer for this truck. I am therefore going to find a dry flying spacer for this truck, which will fit this. Okay, because everything here is identical to everything here. I hope that you guys, um, this video will help you guys. And um, I've already ordered the spacer. And it should be here in a couple days. Okay, so I ordered the spacer. This is a one inch spacer. And this is the part number right here, if you could see here. It's 301 697-1 kit. And it's made by Trail Gear. Okay. And it's called the Long Field Toyota uh, Dry Flying Spacer. It, it's, uh, it's one inch. So this thing right here is an inch. Okay, so what I did, I this is the bag that it, that it came out with, okay, and this is the uh, bolts, nuts and bolts that comes with it, okay, and you're going to be replacing, uh, you're going to be using this in place of the old uh, nuts and bolts that you have for the yoke here. Okay, so, <clears throat> sorry, I'm coming down with something right now, so that's why my, that's why my voice is different. Okay, so, um, to start off with this, what I did is... I um, test fit this thing, right? So as you can see here, it fits like a glove, all right? So this thing will go into um, the pinion yoke right there. And <clears throat> what I did is I, I marked the holes. Because as you can see here, there's a lot of holes right here for different sizes of uh, uh, cars, okay? So you have to pick the right holes for, for your uh, yoke. And so I picked the right hole and I mark it like that with a permanent marker. If you, you, I don't know if you could see it, but that's where I mark it. One here, two, three, and four here. And on this side, I did the same thing because how it's gonna be like is you're gonna um, mount this in and to the pinion yoke, okay? And so that's how it is. I'm gonna go mount it right now. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque it to spec. Yeah, yeah, you're going to need a torque wrench so that uh, these nuts and bolts won't come off. And this is a lock. It comes with a lock uh, nut, so that's that's good. But we're going to um, bolt it, this to uh, uh, spec. So that's that. Let's go down. Okay, guys. So we're down here underneath the car. So to begin this job, you insert the yoke sleeve. Okay, back in its places here into the drive shaft. Okay, so <clears throat> after that comes the uh, fun part. So as, as you can see here, I've pre-marked a spot here. Okay, and that spot goes coincide with this spot right here. Okay, so I, before I took out the um, drive shaft, the uh, I mean, took out the yoke, I pre-marked that spot. So it'll go back to the same spot there. Okay, most folks will argue that it doesn't really matter if you mark it or not. The drive shaft is already uh, balanced. But to me, for the sake of, uh, I don't know, my own conscience, I marked it so that it'll go back to the same spot. So, <clears throat> okay, so to begin, let me put this aside and position the camera so that you can see better. Okay, so 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this, we're going to install the spacer, right? So if, as you can see here, these are the holes that I've marked. If you can see here, there's like a little uh, raised area here, like that, okay? This area here goes into this hole right here. And then this area right here goes into the yoke, okay? The yoke or the yoke sleeve or whatever you call it. And this goes in like this. As you can see, they're, they're, they're mounted right on and it's perfect, okay? So now, uh, you notice that it'll, it'll come off and on easily. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to install the drive shaft. We're going to put the drive shaft onto here and then we'll bolt it, okay? Okay, so that's that, and then we're going to use the mounts, the bolts, to mount the drive shaft in to place. So the bottom bolt goes in, the lock nut goes here. As you can see, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this, you can take it to the shop. And uh, they'll charge you an arm and a leg to do this, but you could do it yourself. Okay, so the bolt here goes in. That's that. That is a pretty fun uh, Saturday morning job. Doesn't take a rocket scientist. Now you're basically almost done. And <clears throat> I'll show you. Oh, let's see. Okay, see, remember the spot? It was coming out about uh, an inch. Well, it's back to the same spot. So this is good. So I don't have to worry about the drive shaft coming out. So now let me tighten this, um, the torque it to spec, and then I'll show you how the final product looks like. Okay, so I have. Tighten this uh, to spec. The book calls for 22 to 36 foot pounds of torque, but I put 38 foot pounds of torque just in case. Um, the reason is because this is a type, different type of bolt, and I'm thinking that it might stretch over time. But hey, you know, it's got a lock uh, nut right here. So, <clears throat> um, okay, so let's look at the angle here. Uh, it look, doesn't look too bad. And then this is this is what the cause of the concern was. Um, earlier, it the uh, the spot here had slipped out about an, almost almost an inch. So that's the drive shaft right there, and it's come out about half an inch. So uh, that's what I'm worried about. So. <clears throat> I'm comfortable with it being like this because, as you can see here, the suspension here will will compress up and down, traveling on the highway or off road, and this yoke right here will be the yoke sleeve here will will be going in and out like that. And uh, to me, I'm comfortable because now there is about this much um, uh, yoke in here, or. or or whatever you call that thing, sleeve in here, so it won't it won't uh, fall out, and so I'm comfortable with the setup. So let's look at here, the midship bearing here, or carrier bearing here. I'm thinking about in the future if uh, it starts to vibrate, maybe shimming this down a little bit so that um, you know there's less of an angle here. You know, it, it's because it's going from the transfer case there or the transmission there down to here and it's sort of like slightly slightly angled down but it doesn't look really bad um, because it's a it's a long drive shaft so I'm gonna test drive it and go on from there hey guys so I'm done modifying the rear suspension and I added new wheels and new tires so the truck actually sits higher uh, than it was uh, prior to my project here. 
So this is a new stance and <clears throat> I'll let you know what I did. After adding the uh, helper spring here, okay, under here, this is the new spring right here. Basically, I found out that it was too long, so I shortened it about two inches. It was um, resting on the C, uh, the C clip here, that which is holding the uh, top three springs here, so it wasn't really good. So I trimmed it down to two inches, making way uh, so that it's not resting on here. So if you look at it, there's a spacer there. Because of the added height, the yoke sleeve was slipping out, so I added uh, an inch more of a uh, spacer there to make it uh, uh, right again, so that I don't have a, it, so that it won't fall out uh, while I'm driving down the highway. So <clears throat> that's that. So overall, I had a total of about four inches of gain after uh, from the original OEM height. So, um, that's my project, um, and I forgot to uh, add that, uh, I already taken it on the highway going as fast as 75 miles an hour, and uh, there's no drive shaft vibration, drive line vibra vibration of any kind, rides like stock. Um, I, I, you know, after thinking about this project, I prefer this setup than adding a block uh, onto the uh, the rear the rear here. I did some research about adding a block versus adding a spring. Uh, there's pros and cons on either uh, setup. I chose to go with the spring because I feel that the spring is a little bit more sturdy than adding a block uh, with the lift block. Um, my research, uh, there's a chance of it falling off um, if you uh, do hard core wheeling on it. Uh, that's what the off-roader says. So I know that some off-roaders will um, not agree with me, but hey, you know that's what some of the site says. So so anyway, so this this lift here doesn't have a block. I'll show you again. It just has a helper spring right there, and it's got a helper spring with the original leveling kit that I bought after I bought the car, uh, lifted it up. So no, no block, just an O, just leveler kit, uh, helper spring, and then another added helper spring. So two helper springs on each side. It drives normal. It doesn't have any bounce to it. Um, but some may disagree with my setup, but I like it. Uh, let me know what you think.